X-Men 97, Season 1, Episode 3, Thoughts, Fireman Flesh. Holy crap, this episode was amazing. Okay, so, um, spoilers for everything, Fox, X-Men, and the, the original X-Men 90s animated TV show. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, as you can tell, love this episode. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, the, the, hmm, where to start? I love how much of this episode, I think it's like 10 minutes straight, that's like psychological horror with body horror, and taking inspiration from Akira was, yeah, inspired. You know, you've got bodies melting into each other, and, you know, yeah, these these creepy visions emerging from, from darkness and animation, just, yeah, um... And the, the, you know, this is, this is, of course, what you get when you have an extremely powerful, or a thing you can get, when you have an extremely powerful telepath who's going down the path of evil. You know, you, you can have something like everyone's fears coming to, coming to life like this. And, yeah, you know, everyone's anxieties really effectively brought to life you know Roberto is terrified that his family will reject him when they realize he's a mutant Gambit is terrified of losing Rogue to Magneto you know the the yeah I don't have to go through all of them Every, all of it was spot on you know this is what we love about you know these X-Men animated this and the original show the character moments are just spot on. The, yeah, I and I appreciate how like it slowly built to a crescendo. It didn't go, you know, like they they descend into hell. That didn't happen immediately. You know, it starts with a few, you know, glimpses of of things, and the, yeah, I think that might pretty much cover the the nightmare aspect so yeah um note to gambit if you you know handily defeat morph don't be a jerk about it because they are not going to take that lying down you know i love you know morph is like well you know rematch oh never mind <laughs> Rogue and Magneto are going to be at it for hour after hour after... Wow! Your girlfriend is spending a lot of time with this guy you hate. I mean, I'm not telling you what to how to feel about that, but I, I just feel like, you know, if that were me, I'd probably be really upset. About, you know, just... Yeah. And, and, you know, it's not like Morph is just constant. Like, he's definitely got the, the kind of, you know... They, yeah, more they like to, to mess with people, for sure, but they don't go that far every single time, you know. Um, let's see, yeah, some great stuff with, like, I, I will just re be referring to her as Madeline Pryor for, even though she only takes that name at the end of the episode, just for ease of communication. But yeah, you know, the... the we, you know, last episode ended with us seeing how, like, she wasn't confused or, or so she was offended, you know, that this other Jean, who, again, for ease, I will just be referring to as Jean. Although I do appreciate Morph's bit of, of Jean Doe, that was phenomenal, but yeah, you know, Madeline is offended that Jean is, is showing up, and, and in Madeline's defense, it's not like she knew you know, she did not know that she was a Brimstone clone. Fantastic. You know, Magneto, always great with words. But yeah, Beast, you know, does the tests and can, you know, no, no, that Jean is the original, Madeline Pryor is the clone, you know, and the way that everyone, you know, she, she says Storm would have been on my side, you know, but everyone is like, I mean, when is Beast wrong about science? You know, this is, it would be the first time if this actually was him botching something science, or, well, second time since the blue fur and all, but, 
you know, usually he's right. He hasn't been wrong since that. And the, the, um, yeah, I love when Madeline, like, transforms, you know, the thing of, like, Beast is, is looking into the, the DNA and he's like, a, you know, a, a great time just like an artist has of unique signature and the the signature on this clone's DNA is you know that of a man I can only describe as sinister you know fantastic just yeah and that was also so creepy with sinister coming through the uh, what's it called the um the baby monitor you know and suddenly he's there in the room with her and that also like love how it's leaning into you know the the original animated show also did this sinister is like a mad scientist that's what he is you know and and it's it's glorious like this it, it is the the comic book amped up version of like one of the classic movie mad sciences you know professor frank or doctor i guess dr frankenstein um dr jekyll you know yeah one of one of these that that messes around with science and and you know, does something truly monstrous with it. And I love how many lightning strikes, like, this episode did not hold back on, like, you know, every so often someone will, like, emerge from the shadows and there's a lightning strike or, you know, something like that. F yeah, phenomenal action, as usual. Um, really love Morph uh, bringing out Magic, who, you know... <laughs> We haven't actually seen in, in this animated, in, not in this show so far and not in the original, but, hmm, is it a spoiler to say who, I'll, I'll just say we've seen someone who's got a connection to her. I suppose it's possible they're going to go further into it, but, but yeah, great cameo, you know, it's, it's like the original 90s show had. It's one of those, like, if you know the comics, you're like, oh, that's, you know, that's that person. And if you don't, you're not, like, completely, like, oh, I can't follow this at all, you know. But the, um, let's see. Yeah, some some really great stuff when, you know, the, the team of X-Men go into Sinister's, uh, you know, mansion, I guess it is. And the... Yeah, just little details like, you know, Cyclops accidentally draws blood. And he's like, Jean, I'm so sorry. And she's like, you'll bleed too. And and yeah, you know, Goblin Queen, this was what some had theorized we would get. Which I believe, it. I don't think I've actually read this of the... I haven't read everything Jean Grey. Um, but I believe it is accurate to the... You know, not absolutely, not, not word for word, but... Yeah, Madeline Pryor, clone of Jean Grey, by Mr. Sinister, for, you know, in order to, to gain control over Nathan. Yeah, and, and the, the, let's see, yeah. Very, very cool when, when Jean and, and Magneto face off, and this thing of, you know, yeah, Magneto attacks with metal, and then Jean counterattacks, and she throws, like, glass at him, and, you know, he tries to make a, a shield, but, you know, yeah, like, little little bits of, of, of glass, that's very, very difficult to completely, you know, guard yourself against. And I think that might more or less cover that. Yeah, so that brings us to, yeah, you know, Sinister put Nathan in the, the thing, you know, he's like, I'm going to make you invulnerable, in invincible. And... Yeah, you know, mad scientist be mad sciencing, mad science goes wrong. So Nathan ends up with the techno virus, which I appreciate. You know, th this is not the first time they've encountered the techno virus. So, you know, Beast can, of course, recognize that that's, yeah. And the, um, let's see, the, uh, yeah, they talk about, you know, in our time, we can't. Do anything about it and you know the the logical conclusion of course is for the um I can't believe I'm playing on it, the, the bishop to to take back which I don't want to because they might 
go into it later in the show, so I won't spoil. I'll just say, based on the comics, there is a, yeah, um, Nathan, let's just say something very much like this did happen in the comics, and it is entirely possible that they're going to get into that in a later episode. And I think think that might more or less yeah so so great to see sinister again love that they didn't tone him down like if any like this is the most horrific thing we've seen in either of these animated shows it's like what what is the age rating for the show again um tvpg okay i yeah and as far as i can tell it, they they did bring back the the same actor for sinister as well it certainly does sound like it's the same like they have with a bunch of them uh, you know they've brought back pretty much everyone that it at all made sense to um let's see i feel like there was one more thing um right yes um the 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 ending of the episode with you know gene very reluctantly I guess, is that Madeline saying, one of them, says goodbye to, to baby Nathan, Bathan, and, you know, Im yeah, make sure he knows that he is loved, and they, they have, you know, they, they try to imagine what he'll sound like and, and such when he grows up, you know, I've never experienced it myself, but I do hear that having to give up your your child is is one of the hardest things to to do and the right also uh quite appreciate that the thing that wakes madeline Pryor from sinister's control which seemed complete is the you know to remind her of how much she loves nathan and it's it's one of those things you know it is important that we don't imply that the only way a woman can feel fulfilled is to have a traditional family role, but it is also important that we don't act as though it doesn't fulfill any women, because there are some women who are, yeah, it's it's what they want, and they're, it, it, it does make them happy, you know, it's, it's important that we don't let feminism just become a new controlling, you know, entity that tells women what they can and cannot do. That's not what feminism is all about. It's about freedom for women, not just a different direction with, you know, similar control. Um, yes, so the episode, you know, ends with Jean and Madeline Pryor saying goodbye and and you know Jean says you don't have to go you can stay and Madeline says you know this is you know before I realized I was alone I did really want to to go and the yeah you know she's going to to forge her own path really great to see and the very last thing we see in the episode you know there's yeah the news is talking about the weather and, and, you know, someone approaches Storm's like, well, sure would be good if someone could affect the weather, you know, and Storm's like, okay, I don't like to, I don't like guessing games, who are you, you know, and it's Forge, and yeah, if anyone, you know, and he promises I can restore your powers, if anyone in this time can, it's, yeah, Forge is, is definitely, you know, possibly not entirely by himself, but he's, you know, being part of it makes a ton of sense. And, yeah, really looking forward to, to seeing the, the Storm storyline, or the Stormy line, if you will, and I hope you will. I, I really look forward to seeing that play out. And, yeah, um, really, really love this episode. Holy crap. Yeah. You know, I've I've read X Men comics that are this like intense and and psychologically terrifying, 
So I'm really glad. It's not really some like, for sure, the movie New Mutants tried, and some of the way almost succeeded, but no, this is the kind of, yeah, so glad that we're, we're getting this. You know, these three episodes have been quite different from each other. Like, they're not just stuck in a rut and, and doing the same thing over and over. Um, yeah, gonna, gonna do, I'm, I'm probably gonna be able to do the next episode on the day as well, like I was for this one, so yeah, catch you then.